Deontay Damper with me. In case you don't know, he is the host of We Live in Color, which airs uh, Wednesdays at 7 p.m. on Converge. No, it's 8, eight but eight. you have a special coming up this week at uh, 7 p.m. All right, well, shoot. Welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. We have been friends for a long time. So I know. I'm really just happy just to be finally just be in the presence of you yes yes so. and you know what's so crazy and we always talk about this on the phone but it's like our friendship started so organically i don't even know why i called you that day but there was a day where i called you we were on the phone for like two hours and freaking cried for like about an hour and three we were on the phone for three hours <laughs> And we cried. <laughs> Definitely. I cried. can't remember what the call was, but it was, I think it was right before the pandemic. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think it, the main conversation we were having was just like, as much as we show up for people, how do we show up for ourselves? Mm -hmm. And through that conversation, I think that we both realized that we did not, we weren't properly we just didn't know showing how. up how to sh show up for ourselves. Right. Yeah. Or learning, learning the power of no, yeah. knowing our boundaries just everybody can get this love. Everybody can get get access. And sometimes when you give everyone that access, it drains the hell out of you. You know, it does. And that was definitely a problem of ours. So where it was like, not only was I drained, I was depressed. And it was like, oh, OK, well, we're just going to do this to work on our depression, which really it didn't do anything, right. but just kind of like smother it a little bit. But it was still there. <laughs> <laughs> Since then, you know, you've re you've joined Converge Media and you now have your show, We Live in Color. Yes. For starters, what does it mean to live in color? Living in color. The main reason why the show even got started, right, is like when we talk, when people talk about queer people in our community, they just see pride. They see the pride. They see the flags, but they don't understand, you know what we go through as community members, especially I watched a lot of my community members that are, I, that are from the queer community go through so much stuff in community where no one was really showing up for us, where yes, we do have allies in the LGBTQ community, but sometimes people wanna put that in front of us being black. And, and for me, that was really hurtful. Not all, but most. So creating a platform for Black folks to get the representation and included and be included in it has been so important for me and so important to O. And, 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 and yourself, as well as Curtis, I got to shout y'all out because y'all have been so helpful uh, with bringing those stories to life. There's so many queer people that are out there. They're case managers. They are of service. They are constantly of service. But do we have their stories? Do we have, do we give them that moment besides the month of June? Say outside of pride. Right, outside <laughs> of pride. It's that inclusivity. It's, the, uh, it's that inclusivity that we need to be talking about. And also how we can support, how we can support. Because a lot of people have to unlearn things, right? And me as a queer person, I got to unlearn some stuff too. I try to cancel some people and it's like, no, that's what the man wants you to do, right? That's what some of, that's what some of the allies want you to do. They want you to cancel out community members and do all of that. And I'm not with that. And We Live in Color is, is a, an opportunity for us to see each other and be each other and be one with each other. I'm really excited about not just bringing those stories to life, but next week I'm going to do something different where I will ha be having a, um, a, an ally to community who, who's heterosexual. It's time well, you to- did tell me yeah, about yes, this. Right. Yes, you told me about this. Brandon Sanchez has been my best friend for, for, for my whole life. And we, one thing I love about him is that he said, like, you know, I never have an opportunity to be vulnerable, Deontay. You know, I never have that space but I want to come on your show and tell my story. He could have went on anybody else's show. He's friends with the factors and all that. But to, for him to, to say he wants to live in color in his truth of where he's at, that means a lot to me. And it's time for us to really also wrap our arms around like men in leadership that are coming out, you know, th that need that type of support. So I can't wait for that episode next week. I love that because, you know, even one thing that I talked to Jay Martin about was it's it's crazy how if you're a black male, you're supposed to only feel like this. Right. You're not supposed to have any emotion, whether you're straight or, you know, homosexual. And even then, sometimes they're like, no, well, you're, you still should be acting like this. And it's yeah. like what's so great about we live in color. And I, I told this joke to somebody. I might have even said it to you, but 
one minute you're having someone talking about kink and then the next day it's like so tomorrow we live in color we're talking about real estate yeah absolutely because <laughs> it's a that. lot we got a lot we have a lot going on you yes. know and i think that it's time to just continue to have those conversations i love i love that O has been just so open just like this is community and it's just time to actually show people what that representation looks like it could be kink it could be real estate you know, we're also working on a, H a World HIV Awareness Day. We have something coming up for that. We're still not having the conversation about that in our communities. Like, it's so much. There's so many layers to us, and they're going to they see them on, on the show and through Converge. All the way through the colors. <laughs> <laughs> what would you say that, you've, that you are most proud of that you've worked on in terms of yourself over the last year? <laughs> I would say, um, to be transparent, it was my recovery. You know, for those who don't know, um, when the pandemic hit, I relapsed and I relapsed off of methamphetamines and I was doing it through injection use. And I got to the point where I was OK. And then it got to those points where I was just not. Being around, being of service to community was fine. It was fine showing up for people. It was fine advocating for people countlessly throughout the days, passing out masks, advocating, going to j do, doing jail advocacy. This is why but, I put you last. Yeah, you know? <laughs> but when but when I got alone, when I got alone, just it, it, I did not know how to show up for myself. But what I would do is when I would stop using and binge, I would actually come back out to community and jump on another project. I'm okay, y'all. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. And it got to the point where everything was actually really great. Just started the show. Got a great job working in, with exactly what I wanted to do. And I relapsed. I crashed. And I, I had to put myself in a treatment. My recovery is the, is the best gift that I've, ever, that I've ever gave myself. Because now, now I can fully live in my color. Now I can uh, now I can give community members that are using methamphetamines an opportunity to free themselves. I can tell you that over the past couple of years, I have been able to show up, right? But now, in my space of recovery, I'm going to show up and show the hell off. Can we clap it up for that? I love you. I think people don't realize that. Oh my gosh. The reason why I'm crying in this moment is I remember when you called me and you were like, did I call you last night? And I was like, no, I was out. I did my mixer. And then the first thing that you said was, no, I got to check myself in. Yeah. And you did. And you worked on it. And you've come back so much better and so much stronger. And I'm so proud of you. Thank you, Basim. I, I appreciate you, and it's and and I and when I did call her, y'all, it was because of that first conversation that we had, where we talked about really not knowing how to show up for ourselves, but we're showing up now, we in our full selves, <laughs> in our full selves, yes. and we're here, and it's because of these friendships. Can someone have me tissue? Can we please? get some tissue here? <laughs> I, I'll grab it. These jeans tight. Sorry, mama, but you know, all right. I, <laughs> I'm still single, so you know, I'm just trying to show off a little bit. But, okay. but um, no, I'm not single. But either way, um, it's 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 those friendships. You know, that's why I'm so. I I think that one of the things that I love so much about Converge are the queens that are here. Right. I just interviewed Takia last week, and when I tell you, uh, she, like. It, there's just so much, there's a gift that she just has when she comes into a room. And tomorrow I have an opportunity of doing the candidates forum. Yes. That candidate forum, first of all, why no one is talking about the candidate forums in 37th district um, and pushing it the way that they need to uh, is beyond me. Um, we have two people, Chapalo Street and Amijah Smith. Both of these candidates are going to be taking, take, working under Santos out there when we talk about policies in our community, right? And we need to push it. And I was nervous about doing it, but I'm so happy uh, to have Trey joining me. 
uh, we haven't had an opportunity to work in the areas of Converge, but um, I'm just really happy to this, in this whole week, I've been able to work with the Queens. So what I love about you doing this is I just sometimes feel like in all of our black communities, whether it's a we live in color one, whether it's a, you know, a blue collar type, we don't talk enough about politics, no. especially our local politics. Everyone's like, oh, vote for president, vote for president. And then they're complaining about why taxes are so high right. or why, you know, their potholes aren't getting fixed or why they feel like, you know, the people that they've quote unquote elected aren't doing what they were supposed to do. And it's like, well, who did you vote for? Right. Why did you vote for them? Did you even go to any of their, you know, talks and rallies and ask them any questions or get to meet them or look them up? Or did you just, you know, go down and just circle Democrat the whole way down? Right. And and, and that's and that's the thing. So, OK, so outside of um Outside of Converge, my actual job, I work for Vocal Washington, right, um, where we are advocating for our our low income community members that may suffer from HIV or and or um, mass incarceration and or drug use. Um, and we're working on policy change. So starting next month, we'll be having these conversations with policy policymakers or game changers around the state so we all can know what the policies look like. Even for myself, I don't know what they look like, but I want to know. I need to know because it could be about my grandma. I need to know because it could affect my local church. I need to know because it might be talking about redlining my area. And um, I think that we really need to be in a space of knowing what that looks like. And there are other community programs out here that are have been already having this conversation, but it's really important for the next couple of for these next couple of months to know exactly who's in these offices so we know to ship them the hell out the next time around if they don't if they're not showing up for us and i did say for us because it's important especially rather than at the last minute you know like when i was talking to hill harper earlier he was saying hill harper was here yeah hill harper was here <laughs> oh oh it's about to be on and popping y'all okay <laughs> He was here for about 30 minutes. Okay. Um, but one of the things that he talked about on the show, and he always talks about is how black people are always the last ones to get onto like certain things, but we're always the first ones to spend all of our money. Yeah. And a lot of times when it comes to these politics, we're the last ones to find out after it's so bad that there's nothing that we can do about it. When in reality, if we would have at least paid a little more attention beforehand, we could have stopped it. Right. Abs absolutely. I think that, and, and honestly, it's just, it's time to start re engaging you know it's time to start really start remixing our ish when it comes to community advocacy um, and also showing up for our community members out here throughout the whole state and that's what Co converge has already been doing that has already had the converge is a compass for people who aren't familiar with that right we are helping direct community exactly in their voices and uplifting those voices to put them in the right to put people in the right direction to show up for us us and as we show up for each other. Right. And as we show up for each other. Now, question for okay. this forum. Can people submit questions to you? Yes, you can submit questions to me today. You can always uh, reach out to me uh, through social medias and or you can email me at Deontay.damper at vocalwa.org and or Deontay256 at gmail.com. And before we go, let's see what your one question is on here that I have for you. Hmm. I know what it'll be. Uh, what would Deontay tell his seven-year-old self? I would tell Deon I would tell seven-year-old Deontay that you're gonna be okay. That you're going to be okay. Remember to love yourself. Remember to love yourself. Remember to be in love with yourself. Remember, remember that you have a family that loves you. You remember that you have a community that will show up for you. And remember to continue to be your compass. It's so funny. I, I know I wasn't going to say this before, but my 11 year old self, my first job that I had I was dancing here in the Paramount Theater. I mean, I don't got rhythm now, but I used to do ballet and um, I was a part of an ensemble here when they played showboat here. So it is very funny how the turnaround is because that younger self is sitting here today. 
And that's how God can just be able to move things for you, you know? So, yes. Shout out to my mama, because I know she probably watching. It's just like, mama, look at, my baby. Look at me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? I want to thank you so much for sitting with me, letting me ugly cry on camera from the first time. And that is why I put your ass last. Okay. Because I knew that was going to happen, child. But... We live in color tomorrow, 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. You have your community candidate forum. And again, make sure you guys send in those questions. So that way you're not afterwards watching it being like, damn, I wish I would have gotten this question in. All right. Um, where can people keep up with you on social media? You can quick? keep up with me. <laughs> you can keep up with me on um, on my social channels. Deontay, just look up Deontay Damper, Dampy Your Life on um on Facebook, you can also look at some of the other things I'm doing with Build 206 as our OLS instructor. So build206.com. You can also look at me, what we're doing through Wild Therapy Fund. Um, I'm trying to think of any other entities right now. Y'all don't get me, but there's a lot of things coming. So uh, please be prepared for that. 